Also, another classification of calls, we can look at classification of calls based on controllability. Ability of the management to control the cost. And uh, under this category, we shall be classifying costs based uh, looking at it on the angle of a controllable cost and uh, non controllable costs. Now, controllable costs are costs which can be influenced by its budget holder. That is, the management has a degree of influence on it. The difference between the term is very, very important because uh, the purpose of cost accounting, uh, cost control, and uh, responsibility accounting. Okay, so a controllable cost can be controlled by a person at a given organizational level. So controllable costs are not totally controllable must take note of that some costs are partly controllable uh, by one person and partly by another person so maintenance costs can be well controlled by both the production and uh, maintenance uh, and maintain uh, and what the maintaining department okay maintenance department rather so maintenance costs can be controlled by both the work production and maintenance what department as maintenance manager the term controllable costs is often used to mean variable costs so uh, uh, when you're talking about controllable costs most time we look at what we we'll look at variable costs because variable cost is based on your decision if you decide to increase your production capacity your variable costs will also increase so uh, the, the management has influence on variable costs so so most most uh, often uh, controllable cost is often used to mean variable costs and uh, non non controllable costs sometimes is also referred to as a fixed cost but uh however the following fallacies about the controllable costs we are given one of the fallacy is that one uh, 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 fallacy of controllable costs one of them is that uh, uh, all variable costs all variable costs all variable costs are controllable all variable costs are what they are controllable costs and all all fixed costs all fixed costs are non controllable that's one of the fallacy of uh, controllable and uh, non controllable cost and secondly uh they well they say there's a fallacy that also said that uh, all all direct cost all direct all direct costs are controllable management has a degree of influence and uh, then and uh, indirect indirect costs is a fallacy are not controllable that is their what they are non controllable what costs so uh, there is also another fallacy uh, there is also another fallacy Another fallacy state that what all and that fallacy state all all long term all long term costs are controllable. All long term costs are controllable and uh, sometimes the time factor and the decision making authority can what make a cost controllable so all long term costs are what are controllable if the time if the time period is long enough all costs can be controlled so because long term is 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 is, is very long is a period of production that is very long so all uh, all long term costs are controllable so it's a fallacy so period uh uh so all costs in the long run are said to be controllable and uh, if you look at the economic uh, angle they tell you that what in, in the long run production period all costs are variable costs and, and the fallacy of all variable costs are controllable makes what all costs in the long run to be a variable to be a controllable cost so all costs can be controlled all costs in the long run can be controlled okay so take note of uh, that but all costs can be controlled by one or another person 
the authority and responsibility of cost control is delegated to a different level though the managing director is responsible for all the costs you must take note of that another form of classification of cost here is a classification based on analytical and decision making purpose you can classify cost based on analytical for analytical and decision making purpose here we shall be looking at what we mean by opportunity cost what is opportunity cost opportunity cost is the cost of selecting one course of action and losing of the other opportunities to carry out the world the cost of what and losing what of other opportunities to carry out the uh, 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 to carry out the, the that cost of what action that is what we mean by opportunity cost so take note of that is it is the amount that can be what received if the asset is utilized in its next uh, in its next best alternative and sometimes opportunity cost, I always say it is what the benefit for gone from the alternative not choosing is also termed the opportunity cost. So for analytical decision purpose, we must consider our opportunity cost. They also have what we call the sunk cost. The sunk cost. The sunk cost. So though opportunity cost has also been defined as the best lost by rejecting the best competing alternative to the one choosing so so many definition the best loss is usually the next earning or profit that might have been earned from the rejected alternative you must also take note of that definition so the sunk cost a sunk cost is one that has already been incurred and cannot be avoided by cannot be avoided by the decision taken in the future so as it is referred to past cost it is called unavoidable cost so another uh, uh, some cost is unavoidable cost and uh, and uh, that is how well, well, some cost is being viewed okay so this cost is not useful for decision making all oh, we have to know past costs are not considered when you are making a uh, 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 taking decision a, cost, uh, a sunk cost as an expenditure for equipment or productive resources which has no economic relevance to the present decision process so that is why it is what it is not useful for economic decision uh, or purposes so the SEMA uh, defines it as the past cost not taken into account in decision making that is uh, what SEMA defined called a sunk cost as they say it's it is what is the past cost not taken into account in decision making so we also have a record the differential differential cost differential cost differential cost differential cost has been defined as a difference in total cost between alternatives calculated to assist decision making differential cost is the increase or decrease in the total cost resulting out of the following resulting out of the following for it one it is what uh, producing producing and distributing a few more or few less of what of a product what is the effect of that decision that is what we are talking about when we are looking at uh, at, uh, at uh, differential costs okay now secondly a change in the method of production and distribution what effect will it have what are what what, what has changed so a change in the method of distribution is uh, distribution of or or product method of production so the difference when the, the previous method was being applied the difference when the present was being uh, is now being put in place so we want to look at it then the selection of an additional what sales channel is also part of uh, uh, differential what differential cost also we look at uh, we, are, we also look at uh, another form of cost which we tag so differential cost between any two level of production is a difference between the marginal cost at these two level and the increase or decrease in the fixed cost so if any 
that is attributable fees cost. So these costs are usually specific purpose costs as they are what determine for a particular purpose and under a specific circumstance or condition. So another another cost under uh, analytical purpose is a uh, what we call incremental cost. Incremental cost and incremental cost measures the addition in units for a uh, for what for an additional in output addition in unit for additional in output that is what we mean by uh, by incremental uh, incremental cost so this is also another form of uh, differential cost so this cost need not to be the same as uh, at all levels of production it is usually what it is usually expressed as a cost per unit whereas the differential cost is measured in total so this incremental cost is what is cost per unit but differential cost is measured in total so that is the, 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 the little bottom or, or little line of difference between incremental and uh, differential cost differential cost is measured the difference in total but uh, when we are using incremental cost we are looking at the, the difference in units in output in an additional word output so the cost need not to be worth the same at all level of production it is usually expressed as a cost per unit whereas the differential cost is measured in total the f uh, that is just all we need to know about differential cost so differential cost differential cost is useful in planning is very very good it is a very cost you need to consider in decision making and decision making and it helps to choose the best alternative it helps management to know the additional profit that would have been earned if uh, if I do capacity is used uh, or utilized or even when additional investments are made that is essence of uh, uh, differential cost we also have what we call joint costs joint costs uh, under this joint cost remember we are still under cost classification for uh, uh, cost classification for analytical and decision making purpose so uh, also part of it is what we call uh, joint costs uh, the joint cost the process of a single raw material resulting to two or more uh, different products simultaneously is what we call a joint product Product, uh, joint product. So, as a result of that, a joint cost is being what is being incurred. So, the joint product are not identifiable as different type of product until a certain stage of production, known as what split off point. Uh, we'll be looking at that is rich. So, joint costs are the what cost incurred up to the point of separation. Up to the point of separation, that is what we call the joint cost. So, one product may be may be of more importance and uh, uh, and the other of minor importance which are called byproducts. So the one of minor importance are called byproducts. But the, the cost that have been incurred together before the split off point is what we call a joint cost. Joint cost relate to a situation in which the factories uh, 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 the factors of production in which the factors of production by their basic nature result into two or more what into two or more products so the jointness result from their being what more than one word product and these multiple products are the result of the world the method of production or the nature of raw materials and not of a what a decision by management to board to produce that you know like for like like your, 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 your or, or a refining of crude oil you can see or before you get your petrol, uh, what you call it, petrol, the HPMS, other things must have come up. The chemical they use for soap making and the rest. So that is what we call a joint cost. So a joint cost relate to two or more products produced from a common production process or elements uh, or element material, labor, overhead, or uh, uh, any combination thereof. So that is what we call a joint cost. So joint cost can be apportioned to different products only by adopting a suitable basis uh, uh, of apportionment. So when we come to the joint, uh, by a joint and by product, we will look at uh, how we allocate that. So uh, the next also there is what we call a common cost. Common cost. Common cost. Okay. Common costs are those costs which are incurred for more than one product. They are incurred for more than one product, job, territory, or any word, any other specific word, costs, objects. 
or costing object they are not easily what related with individual product and hence are generally what apportioned so they are generally what apportioned you can say what you can say that common uh, cost the, 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 that they are the cost of service employed in in what in creation of two or more output which is not what allocatable to what those output on a clearly justify what basis so it should be kept in mind that management decision influence the world the incurrence of what of a common cost for instance rent of a factory is a common cost to what to all departments located in that factory like, like some furniture making companies the world the office the showroom is there and the factory is there so the rent of that place is what we call a, a, a common cost so we also have what we call imputed, imputed cost, imputed cost. So some costs are not incurred and uh, are useful while taking decision pertaining to a what a particular situation. These costs are known as imputed or notional costs, and they do not what enter into what into uh, traditional accounting system. So we don't uh, 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 take record of them. For example. For example, example of that kind of cost is interest on internal generated form. That is uh, like your retained profit. You know, interest on internal generated form is a uh, uh, like salary of the owners of the of the of the of the owners of the business. Uh, like for instance, a proprietor, a partnership, no salary, uh, notional rent. You know, yeah, the owner of the business is using the house, his own personal house. So to run the business, so all those things are what we call imputed costs. They are what are called imputed costs. Okay. Now we also have what we call the uniform, uniform costs. Uniform costs. Now they are not distinct costs as such. So there is not a new cost per se. So uniform costing signifies common costing principle, and uh, produces what uh, and uh, procedure adopted by what by number of what of firms. So they are useful in what inter interfere more comparison that is a particular industry may choose a particular form of what we choose a uniform way of reporting so that in such a way we call that what we call that uh, uniform what uniform costing so that is what we mean by uniform costing it's not just a new method it's not distinct cost you know so we also have what we call marginal costing marginal costing and I hope you know what we mean by marginal costing, which we'll be considering as a topic very soon. Uh, marginal costing is also one of the costing, one of the cost for decision making purpose. It is the aggregate of variable costs. When we talk about marginal cost in cost accounting, we are looking at variable costs. It does not mean what the economies mean. Or when, what the economy says about marginal cost to, uh, to an economist, it is the ex additional cost incurred for additional units produced. But in cost accounting, when we talk about marginal costing, we are talking about variable costing. So, marginal cost is the aggregate of variable cost. That is the prime cost plus variable overheads. The prime cost plus variable overhead. So, costs are what? Classified as what? In marginal costing techniques, what will come there will be classifying cost as fixed and variable cost. Those are the two ways we classify cost. So, we will be valuing the, the inventory based on what we call variable cost or marginal cost. Okay. So, we also have what we call we also have what we call replacement cost. Now, this is the cost of replacing an asset at a current market value. So when the cost of replacing an asset is considered, it, it, it means the cost of purchasing the asset at the current market price. It is important and not the cost, uh, it is what? It is important and not the cost at which it was what? Purchased, but the cost of what? Replacing it in the current market price. So we'll call it that what? we call that replacement cost. So that is what we mean by replacement cost. We also have what we call act of pocket costs out of pocket cost it involves payments to outsiders for instance uh, uh, that is it give rise to cash expenditure as uh, opposed to what such cost as depreciation now the position is not a cash outflow so out of pocket costs are those what those costs that will necessitate cash to flow out of the organization to the third party so that's why we call them what we call them out of what out of pocket uh, uh, um, costs 
so depreciation which does not involve what any cash expenditure so such costs are relevant for price fixation during the resection or when the market uh, when make or buy decision is to be what to be made they are very very what important so we call them out of pocket what out of pocket cost depreciation does not constitute it because there is no cash outflow for depreciation so lastly we we'll, as i say we we'll look at what other other costs other way we we'll have what we call the conventional cost uh, that is, sorry, conversion cost rather. Uh, here, conversion cost is the cost of a finished what product or work in progress. So it comprises direct labor and manufacturing overhead. So what it takes to what to turn a product from its raw material to its finished what product is what we call conversion cost. So it is very very important. So your conversion cost is very very important. So that is what we call conversion cost. Whatever, it, whatever you incur to transform a raw material into finished goods is what we call conversion cost. Okay, and uh, we so so we say another way is what uh, it is production what is production cost less the what the cost of what raw material but including the gains and losses in what in weight or what volume of direct material arising due to our production so another that's another way we can get your uh, conversion cost that is the production cost uh, that minus what minus cost of your raw material is your conversion cost okay another way is uh, another form of cost is what we call normal cost normal cost now this is a cost which is normally what incurred at a given level of what output is a cost normally incurred at a given level of output in the condition in which that level of output is what is achieved is what we call a normal uh, cost then we also have what we call traceable traceable cost uh, so it is the cost which can be easily what associated with the product remember what we call uh, cost classification based with what association with the product or department we call it traceable cost remember we have we also have what we call avoidable avoidable cost that is cost that you can refuse to what to not to what incur based on your decision and uh, if you remember we said all variable costs uh, are Controllable and because they are controllable, they are also what available. So available costs are those costs which, under the present condition, uh, uh, need not to have been what incurred. The spoilage, for instance, spoilage in excess of normal limit, unaffordable, uh, for instance, uh, unavoidable cost variant variances which could have all been controlled. We call them what we call them avoidable cost. Okay. So we have unavoidable cost, which is the uh, other counterpart of uh, cost. Unavoidable cost. Unavoidable cost are those costs which, under the present condition, must be incurred. They must be incurred. We call them uh, uh, unavoidable cost. Then we have the total cost. We have total cost, of course, you know what total cost is summation of the variable and the fixed cost. So total cost, uh, this is a sum of all costs associated to a product unit or process or a department or batch or even the entire consign. So it may also mean the word the sum total of material labor overhead. The, uh, the term total what cost, however, is not precise. It needs to be what made precise by using the term that indicates the word the element of uh, uh, cost included so that is what we mean by a total cost and uh, for simple purpose TC equals to what equals to uh, FC that is to TFC total fixed cost plus what TVC total variable cost we also have what we call the value added we have value added value added strictly it is not cost it means the selling price of the product service less the cost of all material used that's what I mean by what we call value added so please take note of that okay so uh, uh, a cost which does not involve any cash outflow is called dash a cost which is not which does not involve any cash outflow is called dash it is called a notional cost or imputed cost 
So a notional cost or imputed cost is a cost that do not involve any cash outflow. So please uh, 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 take note of that. Thank you.